process. All right, welcome into Spillane Field, everybody, here in Wareham, Massachusetts. It is the three and six Wareham Gateman taking on the four and five Orleans Firebirds. My name is Jacob Toby. Thank you for making us a part of your evening as we're bringing you Wareham Gateman baseball here on WCTV. Let's go over the starting lineups. And first, let's check out the Orleans starting lineup. And Jimmy Heron, he'll lead it off. He is the center fielder tonight. Ethan Paul is at second base. He bats second. Rami Gonzalez, the third baseman, he bats third. Cesar Salazar, the DH today, he bats fourth. Nick Decaludi, rather, he's the right fielder, he bats fifth. Kevin Strohshine in left field bats sixth. Steve Pazitempo at the first base. Cole Austin is the shortstop, and Austin Hale is the catcher out of Stetson. He bats ninth. And we take a look at the Wareham defense. It is going to be Willie McIver at third base. Kyle Kasser, the making his debut tonight out of Oregon. He's at shortstop. Jaron Duran, the second baseman, and Blake Sable at first. From left to right in the outfield, John Topa, Nick Angelini, and Luke Bonfield. And Jake Anchia doing the catching for one Griffin Roberts. Griffin Roberts out of Wake Forest. Just finished his sophomore season. He's a right-handed pitcher, 6'3", 210, out of James River High School. And he's made one appearance for the Gateman so far. That was against these Orleans Firebirds. He pitched an inning, let up a hit, a run. That was an earned run, a walk, and no strikeouts. This past season at Wake Forest, he was Wake Forest's closer. 29 appearances, was 2-5 and five out of the pen, 53 and a third innings pitched. A 2.19 ERA, 80 strikeouts, 32 walks, 8 saves, and a 173 opponent's batting average. And he finds himself starting today for the Wareham Gateman. You're going to see a fastball with great sink on it, 91 to 95 miles an hour. Swing and miss slider, 81 to 85. Late sinking action on that slider. And he generates to the weak contact. So the hitters for Orleans have to be careful today to not put the ball on the ground. He was an all-ACC second team pick. And he spent summer 2016 with the Amsterdam Mohawks of the perfect game collegiate baseball league and he is set to take on this lineup who starts off with Jimmy Heron Ethan Paul and Rami Gonzalez last time the Gateman played the Orleans Firebirds was on the 20th of June they lost that game 2 to nothing in Orleans Mason Fioli started that game he went three innings let up five hits no earn no walks one strikeout it was Will Neely who really struggled, went two and a third innings, four hits, one earned run, one walk, had four strikeouts, but he hit two batters as well. Griffin Roberts, of course, made his debut with the Gateman that day versus Orleans. Now it's Jimmy Hare in the center fielder stepping in. 448 on the year, one home run, six runs batted in. And he will face Griffin Roberts to lead it off. Again, Thank you for tuning in to Wareham Gateman Baseball. My name's Jacob Toby. Happy to bring you Wareham and Orleans from Spillane Field. First pitch of the outing is a strike and we're underway. Jimmy Heron, the center fielder, was two for four with a run scored last time versus Wareham. Cut on and missed, and now he's down quickly. No balls and two strikes. O2 from Roberts, just a bit inside on the breaking ball. One ball and two strikes. Jake Anchia behind the plate today, catching as you see the right-handed Jimmy Heron. Pitch was outside. Here comes the 2-2 pitch from Roberts. 
is swung on and missed. Herring goes down, swinging for the first out of the inning. Well, Griffin Roberts starts his outing off well. He strikes out Herring, one gone. Ethan Paul, the second baseman, stepping in. 1-11 on the year. No homers, one run batted in. Wareham coming off the 9-2 loss for Brewster. The bullpen really struggled yesterday. It was 2-2 going into the sixth inning. Peyton Colbertson lets up three runs, two home runs. Blakely Brown struggled in the outing. Four earned runs out of the bullpen. This one nicked foul down the first baseline. Take a look at the Wareham fans coming out tonight. A lot of wind here early on at Spillane Field. And a cloud-covered sky, no sun. It was sunny earlier in the day. Pitch is outside. Orleans coming off a 4-3 win versus Chatham. As Orleans sits. This one hit out to center field in for a base hit. Ethan Paul finds himself on base with a one-out single. Orleans finds themselves fourth in the Eastern Division, four and five, eight points. They're on a three-game win streak. Just a plus one run differential. Wareham in the last spot in the Western Division, three and six, six points. A negative eight run differential as you look at Ethan Paul on first. And now Rami Gonzalez, the third baseman, steps in. 333 average, no homers, one run batted in. Pitch taken for a strike. Ethan Paul, runner at first base. Roberts, nice pitch there, cut on and missed, 0-2. Paul, the runner at first base, has not stolen a base yet this season, looking for his first of the year. We'll see if he goes here with one out in the inning. No score from Spillane Field. Roberts 0-2. Called strike three. Freezes Gonzalez for the second out of the inning. Two gone. Fastball outside part of the plate. Fools Gonzalez. That'll be Cesar Salazar, the DH today, stepping in. Last time versus the Gateman, Salazar was the catcher. He was three for four. Back on June 20th, the, today he's the DH. And there's two outs in the inning. With a runner on first base, Roberts' his first pitch in for a strike. 0-1. Gonzalez out of Miami. Teammates with Frankie Bartow, runner, thought about going, swing and a miss. Paul stays at first base. Gonzalez also a native of Miami, Florida. 6'2", 210, bats from the left side. He's got an 0-2 count here with two outs in the inning. Pitch outside. It'll be interesting to see what Kyle Kasser can do at shortstop today, the Oregon product, making his debut for the Gateman tonight. Was with the team yesterday, was not activated until today. Roberts gets the signs, here comes the one two, fouled off Salazar's foot. We'll do it again, runner was going. Wareham pitching staff has the fourth highest DRA in the Cape Cod Baseball League, 4.13 coming into tonight. They have been struggling as of late. And Griffin Roberts looks to break that. He's already got two strikeouts in the first inning. One, two, low. See 
91 and 95 on that fastball. See some great movement on it as well. Great sink on Roberts' fastball. Two balls and two strikes with two outs. Here comes the pitch to Salazar. Salazar to the second baseman, Duran. He'll throw on the run. Throws out Salazar, and that'll end the inning. So no score as we head to the bottom of the first. You're watching Wareham Gateman Baseball on WCTV. Back here on WCTV, Jacob Toby along with you for the ride tonight. No score, bottom of the first. Let's go over the Wareham lineup. It'll be Jaron Duran at second base batting first. Kyle Kasser making his debut, the kid out of Oregon. The shortstop bat second. Tristan Pompey also making his debut, the product out of Kentucky. He's DHing today, he bats third. Willie McIver, the third baseman today, bats fourth. Luke Bonfield in right field bats fifth. Jake Anchia, the catcher. Blake Sable, the first baseman. John Topa in left. Bats eighth, and Nick Angelini, the center fielder, bats ninth. And you're taking a look at Jaron Duran. He's two for ten with the Gateman so far on the season. Has struck out three times, but showed great speed as he takes a first pitch strike from Jackson Goddard. The defense for Orleans goes as follows. Rami Gonzalez, the third baseman. Cole Austin, the shortstop. Ethan Paul at second. Steve Positempo at first. Left to right, Kevin Strosine. Jimmy Heron in center field. Nick DeColodi in right field, and Austin Hale doing the catching for Goddard. So now Duran behind, one ball and two strikes. And Duran just shows that speed that not a lot of guys have. He was at a Long Beach State, and he Sends this one out to center field, in for a base hit. It'll roll all the way to the rawl. It'll go to second base. Durant thinking three. He's going to try to show the speed here. The throw will not be in time. They place the tag, and Duran a leadoff triple. That is the speed that Wareham Gateman fans have been wanting to see, and he shows it right there. He's now three for 10, three for 11, rather, on the year. Puts himself in position here to score in the first inning. What a debut for Kyle Kasser if he can drive in Duran. Again, the Oregon product. There's a funny story on Kasser. We'll get to it a little bit later in the broadcast about how he actually got to Wareham. Kasser, 2017 All-Pack 12. He swings and shoots this one foul. The wind is just blasting out to right field tonight. One one low, two and one. Yeah, look at the flag. 
It's been going like that ever since before the first pitch, actually. 2-1, chopped in the infield to the second baseman. They'll flip over for the first out. Duran scores, and the Gateman have a 1-0 lead. Kasser is retired 4-3, but he does get credit for an RBI. A nice job there from Kyle Kasser, the shortstop. And now it'll be Tristan Pompey. Everyone's been waiting to see this guy out of Kentucky. Very gifted outfielder. He's DHing today, but we'll surely see him in the field. Takes a strike. You can see 6'4", 200 pounds, Tristan Pompey out of Toronto, Canada, a Canadian on the Gateman team. Now the count, one ball and two strikes. Takes a pitch outside, two and two. Here comes, and that is laced into right field. Welcome, Tristan Pompey. He's got a one-out single. Gaming fans got to like to see that in the NCAA tournament this. He hit 320, one homer, three runs batted in, four runs scored, four walks, a double. First team all SEC, Tristan Pompey. Now William McIver steps in, 424, leads the team in batting average, one homer, six runs batted in, also leads in RBIs. Takes a pitch for a strike. McIver has just been so important to this offense. Seventh in the league in batting average with that 424. They check over at first base. Pompey back safely. He's already got his pants dirty as you take a look at that. He's tied first in stolen bases, McIver is, with six in the CCBL. Check swing, first base umpire Nick DeMarkey says yes he did go around. So now it's 0-2. O2 pitch to McIver. He sends this one out to center field and caught by the center fielder Heron. And that'll end the inning. Or rather that's the second out. Two outs. That'll bring up Luke Bonfield. Bonfield, 2-11 on the year. One homer, four runs batted in. Bonfield out of Arkansas. There's the catcher, Austin Hale, went out to talk to Goddard for a moment. Jake Go uh, Jackson Goddard rather on the hill, 6'3", 215. This one sent foul by Bonfield. Goddard out of Kansas, the rising junior. This past season, 12 starts, 16 appearances, 5-4 with a 4.29 ERA. A one foul away, giving chase for a moment is Hale the catcher, but it goes out of play, and he's down quickly, no balls and two strikes. Well, Bonfield bats from the right side. He's got a runner on first base, Pompey. Pitch up and in. Just tuning in, Tristan Pompey on first base. Kyle Kasser grounds out, but he scores Jaron Duran, who led off the inning with a triple. And it's 1-0. Runner goes. 1-2. Is set to the third baseman, Gonzalez, on to first. And that retires the side, but not before the Gateman strike first. The leadoff triple for Jaron Duran, and then Kyle Kasser brings him home. It's 1-0 Wareham here on WCTV.
back at Spillane Field. Jacob Toby along with you tonight. one nothing. The Gatemen have a lead over the Orleans Firebirds. Thanks to Kyle Kasser, the newcomer. Grounded out to second base, but drove in Jaron Duran, who led off the inning with a triple. Now Nico DeColuti, the right fielder, steps in to face Roberts. DeColuti making his debut tonight with the Firebirds at a Loyola Marymount. swung on and missed. And Decaludi at Loyola Marymount this past season, 320 average, four homers, 24 runs batted in. This one outside. 858 OPS. And a 426 on base percentage with that help in the OPS. Cut on a missed. Now the count even two balls and two strikes. Decaludi also pitched nine appearances for Loyola Marymount. 0-2 record. Couple saves, 11 innings, 4.09 ERA. This one sent and falling in front of the center fielder Angelini. And Decaludi is one for one in his career with the Orleans Firebirds. Kevin Strosine, a left fielder, 231, no homers, one run, batted in. He steps up with a runner on first base and Decaludi. Strosine went 0 for 4 with a strikeout last time versus Wareham. is the primary left fielder for Orleans. 1-0, chopped in the infield, coming over as a shortstop. They'll go to second for one, and they double up the Firebirds. Kasser, nice play, 6-4-3, two gone. Well, that'll bring up Steve Passatempo, a local product out of UMass Lowell. A Medford Mass native. He's one for 15 with the Orleans Firebirds. Two RBIs so far. Excited to see the Medford native. Swing at the first pitch. It ropes it into left field, a base hit. First pitch swinging, Pasa Tempo. He's on with two outs. Cole Austin, shortstop, 188 on the year on the Cape so far. No homers, one run batted in. Pasa Tempo, not a threat on the base paths, only stole one bag this year at UMass Lowell. Swing and a miss from Austin. Breaking ball outside, one on one. Okay, Griffin Roberts on the hill out of Wake Forest, making his first start with Wareham. Already faced Orleans once this season in a relief effort. Gave up a run in an inning pitched. It'll be interesting to see how long Jim Lawler throws him out there for. Again, closer's only used to throwing a couple innings per outing. Three or four innings for Griffin tonight would surely be different than what he's used to. Two one fouled straight back to the screen. Cole Austin, the shortstop at the plate. Count even, two balls and two strikes with two outs in the inning. Runner at 
first base is Pasatempo. Roberts taking his time on the hill. Ready to deliver the 2-2 pitch. Here comes. Framed by the catcher, Anchia. Just missing. Alan Libardoni, the home plate umpire tonight. Nick Jamarki at first. John Leeds at third. Full count, three balls and two strikes. Roberts pitch, fouled away. Nice at bat, runner was going on the 3-2 count. But a nice at bat here from Austin. Wind still blowing out here at Spillane Field. Full count pitch. Called strike three, breaking ball. Nicely done by Griffin Roberts. His third strikeout of the outing. And the Orleans Firebirds can't score. Wareham still up one nothing. A nice look at the opposing bullpen here at Spillane Field. As the gateman up, one to nothing over the Orleans Firebirds. Jacob Toby with you tonight. Jake Anchia, the catcher, stepping in for the gateman to face Jackson Goddard. Anchia on the year 182. Had the homer versus Hyannis. That was his only home run of the season so far. Four runs batted in. Takes a first pitch strike. Big cut on miss by Anchia, so he's down quickly, 0-2. Anchia out of Nova Southeastern. He's on a temporary contract with the Gaiman right now. Batted 326 in Nova Southeastern. This one fouled away. Out of play. Fans <laughs> fighting for A. Hey, let the kid have it. There you go. It's one thing you can't do. Take it away from a kid. Nice job there from the parent. One ball and two strikes to count to Anchia. Laces this one in the air. Center fielder Heron has it dialed up. One gone. So Anchia retired. This will bring up Blake Sable at a Southern Cal. 286, one homer. That one coming in the first inning versus Hyannis a couple days ago. Four runs batted in on the season. He bats from the left side. Sable pulled the home run 
to right field, down the right field line versus Hyannis at McKeon Park. You would think most of his home runs this season at Spillane would be to right field. It's the shortest part of the ballpark. That or to left field. But he's more of a pull header than an opposite field threat. He's been playing first base as he hits this one into center field on the ground. One out single. And now he's going to go for two. The throw not in time. Oh, they got him. No, they didn't. He's just changing his gloves. So Sable now at second base. For John Topa. So a runner in scoring position for Topa, the left fielder. 357. No homers, three runs batted in. Goddard stepping in. Topa yesterday was two for four with a strikeout versus Brewster. Pitch outside, ball gets away. Sable thought about going down to third. He'll stay at second base. Nice job by Austin Hale, the catcher, to gather the ball quickly. It was John Topa and Robbie Metz, the only players to have two hits in the game versus Brewster. 1-0 becomes 1-1. One one. But it was the pitching staff that just did not give the game in any chance in that game. Blakely Brown, again, two two-run home runs let up. Four earned runs to his scorecard. Peyton Culbertson struggled as well. This one sent foul. Sable, one of the more athletic catchers you're going to see here on the Cape. Stole 26 bases at Southern Cal this past season. He's a threat. He's a real threat on the base paths. And I'm sure John Topa likes to have him at second base right now. A base hit probably scores Sable. One out in the inning. Swing and a miss from Topa. He's going to strike out. They look the runner at second. They throw down to first. And Topa becomes the second out of the inning on a K. Nice job from Austin Hale, the catcher. Look back, Sable at second. Make sure he doesn't advance on the drop third strike and the throw out Topa. Now Nick Angelini, the center fielder. 214, one triple on the year, two walks, no RBIs. Now two outs in the inning. Wareham still up one to nothing. Sable trying to score. Would be the second run of the day for the Gateman. Angelini swings on this one. It's inner center field. Rounding third coming to the plate is Sable. Two to nothing, Wareham. A lot of balls hitting the center field so far. Nick Angelini does the trick for his first RBI with the Wareham Gateman. Angelini coming in as a temporary contract guy out of Bryant. And he gets his first RBI. Drives in Blake Sable. Now we go back to the top of the order. Jaron Duran, the second baseman. Tripled and scored back in the first. Angelini a threat on the base pass. 19 stolen bases, there he goes, but the batter Duran hits it foul. Angelini, 19 stolen bases, was only caught twice for Bryant. First team all NEC this year was Nick Angelini. Was the rookie of the year of the conference. He's got speed over there at first. As you can see, he's dialed in. Pitch low for a ball. Kyle Kasser is on deck, but there are two outs in the inning. Duran, you can see, wears the face mask on the helmet. 
Still wears his Long Beach State helmet. That's not even a Wareham helmet. Had yet to ask him why he wears that, but some players just wear it because they've had previous injuries, that sort of thing. 2-1, runner goes, the throw down to second base is in time. Angelini gunned down, nice throw by Austin Hale. And that will end the inning, but the Gatemen, they score another, they're up 2-0 here on WCTV. Glad you could join us on a Friday night here on WCTV. Jacob Toby along with you tonight. Two to nothing lead for the Gateman over the Orleans Firebirds. And the number nine hitter, Austin Hale, the catcher who gunned down Nick Angelina to end the last half inning, now steps in. Hale two for four, the Stetson product. He's only played one game so far. One of the keys to the game tonight was for Wareham to score early, give Roberts something to work with, Griffin Roberts, the pitcher. And they've certainly done that. Already a 2-0 lead. Roberts working quickly here, 1-1. Foul back. A little bit of toss in the bullpen. Warm-up toss, nothing major. Trying to just keep warm. It's a little windy out there. If you haven't noticed. 1-2 pitch from Roberts. Breaking ball. Call strike three. That is the fourth strikeout of the outing for Roberts. He's looked great so far. He struck out Heron to start the outing. Gonzalez also fell in that inning. That was a looking strikeout. Cole Austin struck out looking. And now Austin Hale strikes out looking. So Jimmy Heron... Top of the order, stepping in. Came into this game batting 448, third in the CCBL in batting average, takes a strike. Pitch low and in, one and one. Nick Veronesi, our, one of our producers, giving me a great stat. The Wareham Gaiman are two for five, two and five, when they're wearing their blue jerseys. They're one and one in their white jerseys. And the red jerseys making their debut tonight here at Spillane Field for the Military Appreciation Night. We're all wearing red polos as well. So we'll see what the red jerseys do for the Gaiman. 
this season, but Blue have not been good to them. Roberts is 2-1, is sent out to left field. Topa will let it go. Fair, yes it is, it's fair. Rounding first, heading for second is Heron. He'll slide in safely. The throw is close, but Heron with a one-out double. It's tough to see if it was fair or foul, but it ended up going fair. Topa didn't really know either. He might have thought it went foul. He was not running at full speed. Maybe he lost it in the air for a moment, but nevertheless, runner on first base, one out. Jimmy Heron with speed. Now at second base, and Ethan Paul, second baseman, stepping in, singled his first time up. So Paul, the hitter at the plate, Heron at second base. Orleans looking for their first run of the day here in the top of the third. Griffin Roberts, first pitch strike. Roberts gets the signs from Anchia, the catcher. Paul waiting for the 0 1. Ropes this one down the right field line and for a base hit. Coming to score is Heron. The throw won't even beat to home plate. And Orleans is on the board. Thanks to an RBI single from Ethan Paul. It's two to one. Paul scorches it down the right field line. Bonfield did his best out there, but with the speed of Jimmy Heron. He scores easily on the base hit. Romy Gonzalez, who struck out looking, his first time up. Stepping to the plate. First pitch swinging onto the second baseman, Duran. They'll flip to second for one. Do they get the double play? No, they don't. Duran goes to second for one. Gonzalez retired for the second out of the inning, but reaching at first is Salazar, or rather is Gonzalez. Ethan Paul was out at second. So Salazar. The DH waiting on deck, Gonzalez the batter. Struck out looking. Runner goes, the throw to second base, not in time. A stolen base for Romy Gonzalez. Salazar grounded out to end the first inning. He's at the plate now. Roberts looks back the runner, pitches in the dirt, gets away from Anchia, advancing to third is Gonzalez. On the pass ball, and now Salazar has a runner, the game tying run 90 feet away with two outs in the inning. Salazar up two nothing in the count. Here comes the 2-0. Big cut out and miss from Salazar. Salazar yesterday had a two-run home run in the 4-3 win versus Chatham. Went one for three with a walk as well. Takes a pitch outside, so he's trying to continue his hot streak. On the year, came in hitting 333. Orleans was down 3-1 in the bottom of the sixth, and they score three runs to take the 4-3 lead and ultimately win that game versus Chatham. This one hit foul, right? 
in front of the Orleans dugout. Orleans is ninth in the Cape League in batting average coming into today, 236. They don't steal many bases. It's only the fifth stolen base of the season. Gonzalez just stole. They were tied ninth before that. This one hit right back to Griffin. Roberts on the hill, throws to first. The throw was a bit low. Sable digs it out nonetheless, and that'll end the inning. But Orleans does score one. Trying to come back. It's still 2-1 to one, Wareham. Orleans gets back one run. They're still trailing two to one. Jacob Toby with you on WCTV. The Orleans Firebirds coming in, taking on the Wareham Gateman on a Friday night. CCBL action. Jackson Goddard still on the hill for the Firebirds. Jaron Duran will bat. He was batting when Nick Angelini was thrown out, stealing second base back in the second. So Duran gets a New count, swings at the 1-0, fouls it back. If you're just tuning in, Duran led off the game with a triple and scored on a Kyle Kasser ground out. Pitch taken up high. Duran took Long Beach State to the NCAA tournament. One of their better players, their leadoff hitter. Pitch was inside, three and a one. Batted 407 with four RBIs, four runs scored, three walks and a triple in the NCAA tournament for Long Beach State, the beach they call it. Pitch outside and Duran goes down to first with a walk, a leadoff walk. He led the Big West in stolen base attempts at 22 and was second in the league in stolen bases with 15. Now this will bring up Kyle Kasser. Again, making his debut tonight for the Gateman. He's got a runner on first base, very fast, Jason Garen Duran rather. Kasser, all pack 12. He is very used to summer baseball. This is not his first go around. They pitch out to see if Duran will go. Nothing doing on the base paths. The summer of 2016, Kasser played for the Rochester Hawkers of the Northwoods League. Led the team with nine doubles. Batted 289. First pitch swinging, hits it on the infield to the shortstop, they flip for one, they won't get two. So Duran retired for the first out, six to four. Uh, Kasser reaches on the field his choice. So in 2016, again with the Rochester Hawkers of the Northwoods League, Kasser. 2015, he played for the El Dorado Broncos of the Jayhawk Baseball League. Take a look at that flag, it's the wind out there today. See if that plays a factor in any balls hit out to 
right center field. First pitch taken low by Tristan Pompey. Pompey, 10 home runs with Kentucky this past season, will enter the NCAA home run derby. Check over Duran, nothing doing. And Pompey just stellar all season long in center field for the Wildcats. At 361 on the year, they check over Duran again. He's safe. Pompey 361. Those 10 homers, 45 runs batted in. Had 1,005 OPS. Got over that 1,000 mark that's so desired. And he chops this one into left field for a single. And now runners at first and second. Now Willie McIver steps in. Kasser at second, Pompey now at first. McIver flew out to the center fielder his first time up. McIver has been the most consistent Gateman hitter so far this season. Goddard steps off the hill. Goddard in his last outing, his first outing with Orleans, took the loss in a two to one loss versus Bourne. Now look at that dog. No leash needed. <laughs> He's probably not fast enough to run away. Yeah, Goddard took that loss, went four innings versus Bourne. Four hits, two earned, two walks, two strikeouts. Nice golden retriever. A lot of dogs at the park today. One of the events going on. Got a two to one score at Spillane Field. 1-0 count for Willie McIver. Up and away. McIver one for three yesterday, a walk and two strikeouts versus Brewster. Riding a three game hit streak right now. Three balls and no strikes. And McIver will take the walk. So now the bases are loaded for the Gateman for Luke Bonfield. Bonfield grounded out to third base to end the first inning. Now pitching coach for Orleans out to come out and talk to his starter, Jackson Goddard. There is some action warming in the bullpen for Orleans. It is Parker Kelly. Orleans trying to buy some time on the hill. Here comes the home plate umpire to try to break it up, Alan Liberdani. Looks like Goddard will stay in for the moment, but again, Parker Kelly is warming in the bullpen. So Bonfield comes up. Bonfield, we saw him break out two games ago versus Hyannis. He went four for five, a three-run jack, two runs scored. He's in a big spot here. One out in the inning, and the bases are loaded. First pitch taken for a strike. Castle reached on the fielder's choice. He's at third. Pompey, 
the runner at second. He had a single, and then McIver just walked. He finds himself on first base. All three guys on the base paths have speed. Oh, and one swung on a missed, and it's quickly no balls and two strikes. Be good for Bonfield if he can break this open. And he was struggling before that hyenas game where he went four for five. Here comes the 0-2 pitch up and away. Here comes the pitch sent to the second baseman. They'll flip for one on the first the double play Wareham can't score they had the bases loaded Bonfield grounds into the double play but Wareham still leads it two to one we're headed to the fourth Wareham can't score with the bases loaded in the bottom of the third. But they're still up 2-1 to one as we head to the fourth. Griffin Roberts still on the hill. Look at that merchandise and the grill, obviously. You can see the grill back there. I am very hungry. Could use something from the grill right now. Nico Decaludi will start it off first. Roberts. First pitch swinging and missing. Decaludi singled back in the second. And was caught on the base paths in the 6 4 3 double play. Strohschein grounded into that. Pitch outside, 1 and 1. Decaludi out of Loyola Marymount making his debut tonight. Getting the pitcher and the hitter for Loyola Marymount. He trips after he makes contact with the baseball. McIver running. In the infield grass, gunning down Decaludi for the first out of the inning. Nice job there from Willie McIver, who we've seen really impressed defensively at third base. Don Snedden saying that he wants most of his reps coming behind the plate at catcher because that's what he's going to be playing when he gets back to school. Washington starting catcher graduated. Moving on, so that means McIver is going to get the reps, but a lot of these catchers will rotate for the Gateman as 
Kevin Strohschein steps in, grounded into the 6-4-3 double play. Quickly behind now, 0-2. And, and Chia, Sable, Kyver, three catchers. Sable playing all his games at first base so far. On the infield. McIver again, two gone. Two quick outs, good sign for Roberts. Let up the run last inning, back in the third. RBI single for Ethan Paul. Does have four strikeouts working for him, Roberts. A Wake Forest product. As tempo takes a strike. Scaling pitching staff, fourth highest ERA in the league, 4.13. Big swing and a miss there. Quickly down 0 2 is past the tempo. They don't walk a lot of batters. 21 on the year to start coming in, third least on the Cape. This is the thing, the pitchers need offense early on in the ball games when the Gatemen score four or more runs, they're 3-0 this season. And called strike three, fifth K of the night for Griffin Roberts. He's impressing so far, one, two, three inning. We'll check it back in the bottom of the fourth. Pitching change, the bottom of the fourth for the Orleans Firebirds. Jackson Goddard's night is done. Three innings, five hits, two runs. One of them earned, two walks, one strikeout. Parker Kelly coming in for the Orleans Firebirds out of Oregon, making his second appearance. He's pitched two innings on the Cape so far, one hit. He has struck out six batters. Up and in to Jake Anchia. It'll be Anchia, Sable, and Topa for the Wareham Gaiman in the bottom half of the fourth. And 
And Chia sends this one out to deep left field. It's gone. Home run. Jake and Chia, his second of the season, a solo shot. Three to one. Wareham leads it. Jacks it to left field bleachers. And the third run of the game for the Gateman comes on a solo shot from Jake and Chia. His second of the season. And now Blake Sable comes in. Southern Cal first baseman. Takes a first pitch strike. Parker Kelly at Oregon this past season. 14 appearances all out of the bullpen. 1-0 with a 5.17 ERA. Oh, a big swing and a miss from Sable. Was really fooled on the breaking ball. Now he's down 0-2. Not a lot of innings for Kelly at Oregon. 15 and two thirds. Did strike out 23 batters to only eight walks. 0-2 to Sable. Hit on the ground. Second baseman Paul's got it sized up for the first out. John Topa struck out swinging back in the second. Get another crack here. This time facing Parker Kelly for the first time tonight. Topa bats from the right side. The UConn product. First pitch swinging, sends it on a line to center field. Heron's got it, two outs. So after a leadoff home run from Jake Anchia, two quick outs, Sable grounds out, Topa flies out, Nick Angelini, who RBI single back in the second, now steps to the plate to face Parker Kelly. First pitch swinging, Angelini, he sends this one well foul and out of play. Again, Angelini at Bryant, his freshman season. Out of New Hampshire, Bedford, New Hampshire. Conference Rookie of the Year, Louisville Slugger, freshman All-American, first team All-NEC. Had 19 multi-hit games and finished the season on a 14-game hitting streak. It's just 5'10", 170, but he's got a lot of pop six homers this past season. One ball and two strikes with two outs to count. Thought about chasing Kelly's pitch outside, doesn't go around. Two and two. Swung on and missed. Angelini strikes out. That'll end the inning. But the Gaiman get a run on a solo shot. Jake and Chia. And now they're up three to one. Back here on WCTV in just a moment.
We are at the top of the fifth inning. Jacob Toby with you on WCTV tonight. Thanks for tuning in and watching the Wareham Gateman and the Orleans Firebirds. A 3-1 lead for Wareham and a pitching change. Justin Glover out of Georgia. The just finished his freshman season. He's on the hill for the Gateman. Coming out of the bullpen this time. We saw him last time versus Falmouth in a start. And he faces Cole Austin, a swing and a miss. 0-1, Griffin Roberts tonight. Very good, four innings, five hits, just one earn, no walks. He strikes out five. And four of those were looking. So great stuff tonight. This one sent out to deep right center field. It'll fall in between Bonfield and Angelini. Heading for second base is Austin with a leadoff double. Glover got the start versus Falmouth back on June 17th, that walk-off win here at Spillane Field. He pitched five solid innings, one hit, no earn, four strikeouts, and no walks. So he gets the call out of the bullpen tonight, and Chia quickly has to talk to him for a moment. Now they're set. Glover's first pitch to Hale in first strike. Hale two for five on the season so far. Cut on a missed. 0 oh and two. Glover 6 1, 192. Throws from the left side at a Buford, Georgia. Went to Buford High School. 0 2. Set foul down the first baseline. A runner at second base. That's Cole Austin. Now Austin Hale, the batter, sends this one to shortstop. Kasser on the first. For the first out, runner stays at second base. Oh, now the top of the order, Jimmy Heron. Doubled and scored back in a second. Takes a breaking ball in the dirt, 1-0. Cole Austin, no stolen bases on the season yet. He's dancing out there at second base. 2-0 the count. Aaron, one for two on the day, did strike out in the first. Pitch in for a strike, three and one. Checking some scores around the Cape League. Brewster losing to Katuit, nine to six in the top of the seventh at Stony Brook Field. Of course, Brewster just won against Wareham yesterday. Pitch inside, ball four. And down to first base goes Heron with a one out walk. Now runners at first and second for Orleans. So Katuit up nine to six over Brewster, top of the seventh. Yarmouth Dennis over Falmouth, four to one in the bottom of the sixth. That one being played at Gulf Oil Field in Falmouth. 
in Hyannis. The Harbor Hawks trail five to nothing to the Bourne Braves. Nice pitching performance by Brian Eichhorn so far. Five innings, five hits, one earn, three strikeouts, no walks. And the other game at Veterans Field in Chatham, the Mariners lead it one to nothing over the Anglers in the bottom of the second. We'll keep some updates on the scores as we go along tonight. This one grounded to Sable at first. They'll flip on for the double play. But the umpire says no. So Sable just gets Ethan Paul, or rather Heron at second. Runner advances to third, that's Cole Austin. So if Paul reaches on the field, his choice. Now there are two outs in the inning, but a runner 90 feet away. Ethan Paul at first is the tying run. Rami Gonzalez at the plate right now, the go ahead run. He's one for two on the day with a stolen base and a single. The check over at first. Ball in the dirt, but blocked by Sable. Watch out as Austin's the runner at third. Going to be careful with those throws over to first base with a runner at third. Gonzalez, big cut and miss. Two outs in the inning. Back to back swing and misses for Gonzalez and now he's down quickly. No balls and two strikes with two outs. <coughs> Runners at the corners. And Glover take a moment on the hill. Oh two. Tried to chase a fastball, but Gonzalez wasn't fooled. Here comes Glover's one, two. Roped foul down the left field line. Austin at third, Paul at first, Gonzalez at the plate. Glover in with his first inning of work. One, two, ring him up. Gonzalez down looking to end the inning. So Orleans leaves two runners on. They can't score. It's still three to one Wareham here on WCTV.
Bottom of the fifth, that's Belaine Field. Jacob Toby with you tonight. Three to one, Wareham over Orleans. Top of the order for the Gateman. And Jaron Duran at Long Beach State. He is one for one tonight with a triple, a run scored, and a walk. He'll face Parker Kelly. Kelly out for his second inning of work. So it's the top of the order for the game in this inning. Duran, Kasser, and Pompey. Duran, 375 on base percentage this past season at Long Beach State. He's worked a 3-0 count. That should surely be on the shoulders here with a 3-0 count, no outs. Takes ball four, four-pitch walk for Parker Kelly to start off his second inning of work. Second walk drawn by Durant tonight. Now to bring up Kyle Kasser. Interesting story how he got to Wareham. Don Stenton was talking about Kasser and he was talking about how his team needs more versatility, preferably at first or third base. And Snedden one day goes on Facebook, sees that it's Oregon State, Oregon rather, head coach George Horton. It was his birthday, they're friends. And he wishes him happy birthday, does the Facebook thing on his post, on his wall. As the catcher, Anchia goes out to talk to, or rather the catcher, Hale goes out to talk to Kelly. So he wishes Horton happy birthday. That's Kelly Nicholson out on the hill now. Then he starts talking to one of the assistant coaches at Oregon, saying, that he needs someone to play first and third and if he knew anyone in the area. Well then the assistant coach suggests Kyle Kasser. So then Don Snedden, head coach for Wareham, calls Horton, the head coach at Oregon, and says, is he really available? I mean, Kasser at Oregon, stellar season, hit over well over 300 with the Oregon Ducks. He hit 352, pitch out. So Kasser hits 352. Don Snedden asks, is he really available? Horton says he can play every position in the infield. Yes, he's available. And Horton also says, Don, you're the first coach to call us. Don Snedden then said to Horton, and I'm the last one as well, we'll take him. Ever since then, he finds himself with the Gateman. Runner advances to second base in Duran on the pass ball. So now runner in scoring position. So an interesting story there from Kasser on how Kasser got here. Thanks to head coach Don Snedden and a little bit of Facebook to help him. He's got a 2-1 count here at the plate with Duran at second base. And now catcher Hale is going to go out and talk to Parker Kelly once more. Quick chat on the hill. So two balls and one strike. With no outs in the bottom of the fifth, Wareham up 3-1. Pitch outside. Wareham sitting at three and six on the year. Last place in the Western Division. And the Firebirds, four and five, in fourth place in the East. Three one, caught and missed. It's 
this Wareham team has already endured a four-game losing streak, something that last year's team never had to encounter. Full count with Duran at second base. Kasser swings and sends it foul right off the Orleans dugout. We'll do it again. Wareham did endure a seven-game winless streak, but there were a couple ties thrown in there. They never lost a game. Or they never lost four in a row. Pitch outside, ball four. Second walk of the inning. Kasser draws it. It's first and second for Kentucky Wildcat. Newcomer Tristan Pompey. So a great spot for Pompey to make his name. He is two for two with two singles in this game. And if he could break the game open here, Durant can easily score on a base hit from second base. Kasser's got speed as well. We'll see what Pompey can do here as you take a look at the runners at first and second. Pitch outside. Kelly's ran into trouble. Back-to-back -back walks to start off the fifth. Fools Pompey on a fastball. Has to walk it off. One ball and one strike to Pompey. Outside again. Kelly really having trouble on the outside part of the plate. Majority of his pitches have ended up off the plate. Austin Hale, the catcher for Orleans, has had to work tonight. Pompey to right field. Bye-bye. Three-run shot for Tristan Pompey. Welcome to Wareham, 6-1. A three-run shot for the Kentucky Wildcat. A no-doubter to right field. We talk about hitters coming to Spillane and having an easy time pulling it down the right field line. He does just that. 6-1 to one Wareham. And Parker Kelly in some deep trouble here. McIver steps in. Takes the ball 1-0. Pompey three for three, two singles, a three run homer in his debut. Remember he had 10 home runs with Kentucky. He's in the home run derby. He may end up in the Cape League home run derby as well at All-Star Weekend. Which will be at Spillane Field this year. Was at Spillane back in 2015, then they went to Veterans Field in Chatham. Now they're having it back here in 2017. Kelly on the hill facing McIver. Sends it on to Gonzalez at third. Ball and dirt gets away from the first baseman, Pasatempo. And McIver heads to second base. Orleans breaking down here in the fifth inning. And the Orleans bullpen putting a couple guys up. Second baseman, Ethan Paul, out to talk to Parker Kelly to try to calm him down. So, Bonfield up at the plate. Takes a pitch outside. Okay. 
one and the count. This one hit foul. So McIver reaches on the air. Bonfield is 0 for 2 today. He's grounded out twice to end the first and then into a 6-4-3 double play to end the third. He's got a runner at second base in McIver. Still no outs here in the fifth inning for the Firebirds. Check swing, and Bonfield did go around. So one and two the count to Bonfield. That one bounces, but Hale, the catcher, nice job of blocking it. Cody Deason warming in the bullpen for Orleans. A couple other arms as well. Kelly steps off the hill for a moment. Home plate umpire Alan Libardoni takes his mask off for a moment. Now play resumes. Two balls and two strikes in the 6-1 ball game here in the bottom of the fifth. Wareham gets a three-run jack from Tristan Pompey. This one set on the ground into center field. McIver will hold at third. And it's now first and third, still no outs. Jake Anchia, who has a home run to left field. He steps in. Daniel Lynch as well, warming in the bullpen for Orleans. And Chia at the plate today, one for two. Homeward back in the fourth. First pitch swinging, swings right through at 0-1. Field at first, McIver at third. Pitch inside, one and one. Wareham scored one in the first on an RBI from Kyle Kasser, one in the fourth on the solo shot from Anchia, then three here in the fifth. Tristan Pompey, his debut going superb, three for three. This one popped up, foul behind home plate. Key thing about this inning is that there's still no outs. Kelly looking for a double play ball here. Try to induce Anchia into one. Would be really helpful right now as Orlean still has some arms warming in the bullpen. One, two. Out to center field. Sizing it up is the center fielder Heron makes the catch. Tagging from third is McIver. Sack fly from Anchia. Another run for the Gateman in the inning. It's now seven to one. So finally an out comes for the Orleans pitcher, Parker Kelly. But he has to sacrifice another run. Now Blake Sable coming up. He's one for two, doubled and scored back in a second. Grounded out to second base in the fourth. 
Jacob Toby along with you tonight on WCTV. 7-1 lead for the Gateman over the Orleans Firebirds. The ball gets away as they check. Bonfield at first. Bonfield rounding second, heading for third. Bonfield will stand up in the third. He goes from first to third. Ball gets away again. Almost went into the dugout. Sloppy play here from the Orleans infielders. So from first to third goes Luke Bonfield. Most likely be an E1. Parker Kelly not having the best outing. Infield comes in on the grass now. Outfield playing straight away. Sable at the plate. First pitch swinging, sends it up into the air. Coming in is the right fielder, or rather, the shortstop, Austin, makes the catch. Sends it in quickly. I bring up John Topa. Two outs in the inning. Topa is 0 for 2, strikeout in the second. Flew out to center field in the fourth. But does have a runner 90 feet away would be the Gateman's eighth run of the game and fifth of the inning if they can score Bonfield. Umpire cleans off the plate. Topa out of Yukon. Orleans team started out 0-4. They've won four out of five, three in a row. At the helm is head coach Kelly Nicholson in his 11th season as the field manager, longest tenure in franchise history in the modern era. Modern era here on the Cape for the league is back to 1963. Two balls and one strike to count to John Topa. <coughs> Topa chips it right to Austin at short. He makes a diving effort. Nice play to end the inning, but not before the Gateman score four runs, three of them thanks to a Tristan Pompey three-run jack and Wareham up 7-1. Tristan Pompey showing why he is coming to Wareham and making a difference. He is three for three in the game. Two singles and a three-run jack, helping Wareham to a 7-1 lead as we head to the sixth. Justin Glover in for his second inning of work. He'll face Cesar Salazar, Nico Delacuti in right, the right fielder, and Kevin Strohshine. First pitch outside to Salazar, who's 0 for 2 on the day. Grounded out to end the first, and grounded out to end the third.
Glover has gotten comparisons to Braves Hall of Famer Tom Glavin. Single there by Salazar. Tom Glavin, a 3.54 career ERA with the Braves. But Glover, compared to him, knows how to mix his speeds well and spots. His changeup has been solid. Doesn't have a lot of velocity on his fastball, low 90s, but it doesn't matter. He was a 26th round draft selection of the Tampa Bay Rays back in 2016. Decaludi takes a ball. Decaludi one for two on the day. This one hit in the air, Bonfield. Takes care of it, one gone. Stroshine coming to the plate. Yeah, Glover in high school was drafted. Went 10 and 0 with a 1.52 ERA. His senior season, 94 strikeouts, 64 and a third innings. Plus, he also hit 402 with four homers and 49 runs batted in. He uh, was an animal in high school. This one popped up in fair territory. Bonfield has it and retires Strohshine for the second out. So, Bonfield retiring back to back batters. So, after a leadoff single, two up, two down. Steve Passatempo, the first baseman, he Single back in the second, struck out looking to end the fourth. That was the fifth strikeout and final of Griffin Roberts' outing. Four of those strikeouts were looking, which is very impressive. Off-speed stuff is working tonight from Roberts, and it's working here for Glover. Glover, also in high school, earned first-team all-region honors and named a Georgia Dugout Club All-Star in 2016. Reminds me a little bit of Gunnar Leger, who was a pitcher last summer for Wareham and All-Star. And was the Sun Belt Pitcher of the Year for Louisiana Lafayette this past season. This one fouled back and out of play. Not a lot of velocity on the fastball. Glover may have a tad bit more than Gunnar Leger. Leger maybe hit 90 on his fastball. Glover sits in between 90, 92, 93, but both lefties. Swing and a miss. Glover strikes out Pasatempo to end the inning. So Orlean strands one. They still trail it 7 1.
Parker Kelly's night is done. Tough inning for him and the Orleans Firebirds. Two innings, three hits, five runs, four of them earned for Kelly. Two walks and a strikeout. Brooks Wilson out of Stetson making an appearance here for the Firebirds. He'll face Nick Angelini, Jaron Duran, and Kyle Kasser in the bottom half of the sixth. Wear him up 7-1. Jacob Toby with you tonight. Thanks for tuning in to WCTV. Wilson at Stetson this past season. 18 appearances, started 15 of those. Four and seven, a 3.01 ERA. This one hit up in the air. Coming in is the left fielder, Strohshine. Slips on the grass, but makes the catch for the first out. But yeah, Brooks Wilson pitched 107 innings and two-thirds innings for Stetson. And he had 127 strikeouts, just to 38 walks. Pitch inside to Jaron Duran. Duran. One of the second baseman, Paul. And Duran is safe. That is the speed of Jaron Duran. He is fast. So Duran aboard. Now it'll be Kyle Kasser who walked and came around to score on that home run by Pompey. Throw over to first base and check Duran. He's standing there. This one fouled away just in front of Wareham's dugout. on the day, two for two, a triple, a single, two walks. He's at first, Kasser showing bunt, ball gets away, Duran's gonna head down to second base, the throw from the catcher, Hale not in time. Man, is this guy fast. So down to second goes Duran. He is showing why he is a leadoff hitter. Kasser strikes out, or rather goes down to first base. Draws the walk. So runners at first and second. Same situation for Tristan Pompey. Different pitcher now, Brooks Wilson. Pompey hit a three run homer last half inning. inside. Yeah, Brooks Wilson with those 127 strikeouts led the ASU in conference. And that one slammed to center field. It's back. Pompey, his second three home three run home run. 10 to 1. Pompey. That's all you can say. His second three run homer. He takes his hat off. 
What a debut! He has six RBIs. And it's 10 to 1. Watch out if he gets up again, it's going to be a mercy rule. <coughs> McIver steps in. Wow, what a player. He is red hot. Two three run home runs. So Brooks Wilson having issues. Now he faces McIver. Two one set on the ground. Nice play by the second baseman Paul on the first. Showing the defense. Nicely done. That's the second out of the inning. And Luke Bonfield steps in. Bonfield one for three on the day. This one sent out to right field, this one not gone. Bonfield flies out to end the inning. All I got to say is Pompey, 10 1. We go to the seventh. Justin Glover still on the hill for the Wareham Gaiman. They're up now 10 to one. Second three run home run, Jack. Tristan Pompey back last half inning. And we've got a pinch hitter here for the Firebirds. It's Jacks Groshans to face Glover. So he'll replace Cole Austin. Groshans out of Kansas. Takes a ball. So teammates with Jackson Goddard, the starter today, was chased. He went three innings, let up an earned run. Let up two runs, one of them was earned. Five hits, two walks. 
Parker Kelly comes in, lets up five runs, four of them earned. Brooks Wilson comes in. He lets up three runs. Strike called on the outside part to Groshans, who's two for 20 on the season. He does have a home run, two RBIs. This one sent out to left field, and it's the second home run of the season for Groshans. Second time a home run's been hit to the bleachers. First was Anchia for the Gateman. Now Jax Groshans. Second run of the day for Orleans. 10 to two. It's looking like a home run derby here tonight at Spillane Field. Austin Hill stepping to the plate. Glover was looking really good. Coming in for his third inning of work. Let's up the solo shot to Groshans. Pitch goes to the backstop. Two and one. One sent to the shortstop. Kasser on a first. That's the first out of the inning. Hale retired. Top of the order now we go. Jimmy Heron. One for two on the day. Struck out in the first. Doubled and scored in the third, then walked in the fifth. Action in the Wareham bullpen. I believe it's Grant Wolfram. O2 to Jimmy Heron. Stays alive, chops it foul. Ten to two, Wareham. Here comes the 0-2. Sent foul. Sable giving chase, but it hits the stands. Don't believe all last season. I saw a player with two home runs in one game. Could be corrected on that. But my short memory right now says no. Pitch absolutely drills Heron. You could hear it. He walks down to first. Wolfram still warming in the bullpen. So after two solid innings from Justin Glover, he lets up a home run, a solo shot to Jax Groshans. Now hits Jimmy Heron. Now he'll face Ethan Paul. He's two for three today with an RBI. Takes a first pitch strike, going one. Paul takes a pitch outside, one and one. Couple final scores around the Cape League. Katuit beats Brewster 12 to 6. So Brewster falls after beating Wareham yesterday. This one hit to Sable at first. They try to double him up, and they cannot. They cannot double up Heron. They retire Paul. 
for the second out of the inning, but Heron reaches second base safely. Making that call was John Leeds. And now he's having a discussion with head coach Don Snedden. Wareham's head coach. Another final score, Yarmouth Dennis over Falmouth, five to one. So Brewster lost to Katua, 12 to six. Brewster will now fall to four, three and one. And with Falmouth losing, they will drop to four and six. Rami Gonzalez is the batter. It takes a ball, 1-0. Runner at second base is Heron. Bottom of the eighth, Hyannis has scored a run, but they still trail 7-1. to one. Top of the sixth, Harwich up 3-1 over Chatham. So if Hyannis loses, Falmouth lost. And if Wareham can win this one, they'll be tied with Falmouth for third place in the Western Division. Going from last to third in one night isn't bad. If all holds true here, a 10 to two lead for the game and this one sent up in the air, skied out to shallow left field, coming in to make the catch is Bonfield. And that'll end the inning, but a solo shot for Jax Groshans gives the Orleans Firebirds their second run of the day. They still trail it by eight. Hope you're all stretched out. 10 to two, Wareham leads it over the Orleans Firebirds. Jacob Toby with you tonight. As we head to the bottom of the seventh, Jake Anchia, the catcher, due up to face Brooks Wilson. First pitch strike thrown by Wilson. It's Anchia, Sable, and Topa. So four home runs tonight. In this ball game, three for the Gateman, one for the Firebirds coming last half inning, thanks to Jax Groshans. Remember last summer, Wareham had the league leading home run hitter, Colton Shaver, who also led the league in RBIs. Of course, he got drafted. Swing and a miss there from Anchia. He goes down on strikes. Here comes Sable. He's one for three. Double, and an he grounded out in the fourth, flew out in the fifth. Showing bunt, and it goes foul over the head of Austin Hale, the catcher.
up in the air into foul territory out of play. Watch out if you're a fan over there. Red Sox, or rather the Red Sox, the Wareham Gateman will head to Falmouth tomorrow to take on the Commodores. Swing and a miss from Sable. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here from Brooks Wilson after he bounces back from his four-run sixth inning. So they will be, the game will be at Falmouth tomorrow night. Falmouth just lost to YD 5-1. to one. So that'll, that'll be an important game in the Western Division. Then Saturday, then Sunday, they have a doubleheader at Spillane Field against the Mariners, the Harwich Mariners. John Topa, the batter. Doubleheaders were not part of the schedule last season here on the Cape. Doubleheaders here playing, being played on the first two Sundays of June. Last Sunday the game played at Chatham for a doubleheader. This Sunday they will host one. Every team has one away and one home doubleheader. The reason for it, Commissioner Paul, Gall Paul Gallup saying that it will allow players more time to wrap up their college season and be ready to play when the season starts here on the Cape. As Topa takes a two out walk. Double headers are an added bonus for fans. This summer fans will be able to spend an entire day watching the cream of the crop compete for a shot at making it to the big leagues. So that is P Commissioner Paul Gallup's explanation of why the double headers are back in play. Gives the league a couple more off days as well, which the players like. But when, as the catcher, Hale goes out to talk to Wilson, who faces Angelini here. But when there's an issue with fog like there was in Chatham last Sunday with the doubleheader versus Wareham, Don Snedden was saying that he wasn't a big fan of the doubleheaders specifically in that weather. They were trying to get the game in, so Wareham is not going back to Chatham this season. This one hit up in the air, going back is the second baseman, Paul, and being called off by the right fielder, Decaluti, to end the inning. So Orleans, or rather, Wareham strands one, but they still lead it 10-2. We're headed to the eighth.
Justin Glover's night is done. Three innings, three hits, one earned run, one walk, two strikeouts for the Wareham Cayman. It is now Grant Wolfram's turn here in the top of the eighth in this 10-2 game in favor of the Cayman. Jacob Toby with you tonight on WCTV. Thanks for tuning in. Wolfram will face the top of, or rather not the top of the lineup, he'll face the middle of the lineup. Cesar Salazar, the DH. Nico Decaluti, the right fielder, and Kevin Strohshine, the left fielder. Grant Wolfram, we last saw him on June 19th. This one hit foul, giving chase is McIver, the third baseman, sliding! And did he make the play? No. It was close. He slipped, but also popped into his glove, but it popped right out. That was in foul territory, so the count now, one ball and two strikes. We saw Wolfram June 17th versus Hyannis. Pitched two and a third innings, and he struggled. Six hits, five runs, three of them earned did have three strikeouts, didn't walk anybody, but let up those three earned runs. Now has Salazar behind, one ball and two strikes. Lefty delivers, pitch in the dirt. Wolfram out of Davenport, just finished his sophomore season. He is a big one, 6'7", 224. Out of Hamilton, Michigan, went to Hamilton High School. And in 2015, was drafted in the 17th round by the Tigers, 520th overall. Wolfram's 2-2, chopped foul down the first baseline past the Wareham dugout. Wolfram also broke the school record for single season wins and strikeouts at Hamilton High School. Two, two to Salazar, up in the air, in the infield, coming over, just on the edge of the grass now is the shortstop, Kasser makes the catch. Nico Decaluti, the right fielder. So Decaluti is one for three on the day, singled in the second. Chases the first pitch for a strike. Gateman score, four runs in the fifth, six in the third, rather three in the sixth. One slicing down the right field line. Foul, says Nick DeMarkey. The first base umpire. So Decaluti, no balls and two strikes with one out in the top of the eighth facing Grant Wolfram on for his first inning of work tonight. The 0-2, set, broken bat, watch out. Coming in is McIver on the run, guns him down. McIver coming in on the infield on the broken bat from Decaluti, retires him for the second out. Here comes Strohshine. Strohshine tonight, 0 for 3. Grounded into the 6-4-3 double play in the second. Grounded to third in the fourth. Flew out to right field in the fifth.
available for him at Davenport this past season. Started all 17 appearances. 3.28 ERA, 100 strikeouts to just 44 walks. Good for a 2.27 strikeout to walk ratio. One, two, bounces in the dirt, hits Anchia's hand, shaking it for a moment. Wolfram shaking off the signs, finally finds a pitch he likes. Delivers the 2-2, framed by Anchia just a bit outside. Now the count full. Wolframs 3-2. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Stroshine strikes out. Orleans goes 1-2-3. We're headed to the bottom of the eighth. Still up 10-2. Wareham. Brooks Wilson, his night is done. Two innings, one hit, three runs, two of them earn, one walk, two strikeouts. Now it's JT Henson's turn for Orleans. Face the top of the lineup, Jaron Duran, Kyle Kasser, and Tristan Pompey. Pitcher Henson, six feet, 185. Florida Southern. This is his fifth appearance here on the Cape so far. Got one save, pitched five innings, one hit. No more in runs, no walks, and six strikeouts. Two balls and one strike to count to Duran, who's had a great day. He's reached base in all of his plate appearances. Single in the first, walk in the third, walk in the fifth, single in the sixth, and those, that single in the sixth, he came around to score as well as the triple in the first. And he continues that streak of reaching base safely. He goes down with his third walk of the day.
to bring up Kyle Kasser, who has also reached base on walks the past two times and came around to score, thanks to Pompey's home runs. And if he can get on base again, watch out for Pompey. He could do it for the third time. That would be pretty impressive, as if it's not already impressive. He has two home runs already. First pitch taken for a strike. Duran probably going to try going to second base at some point. Try to test Hinton and the catcher, Hale. has scored six runs in the bottom of the eighth. Bourne still up by one, seven to six at McKeon Park. That's an important one for the standings if you're a Wareham Gateman fan. Pompey waiting on deck. Two to pitch to Kasser. Hanging breaking ball. Blooper into center field for a base hit. It's first and second. And everyone, their eyes will be on Tristan Pompey. If you're Pompey, you are absolutely looking for a pitch to drive for your third home run of the game. Why not? Your debut's already gone as well as it could have. He is four for four. With six RBIs. And everyone at the ballpark watching Pompey right now. And he was going for it, swinging a miss. Nice side there from Pompey, one and one. Don Sneddon was talking about how he needed a guy to come in and hit home runs. He's got just that. And Pompey pops this one to right field. It's not enough. He gave it a ride, I'll tell you that. Runner tags to third. It'll be Duran. Oh, man, was that close. Crowd gives him a nice round of applause. I admit, I thought it was gone. Or it had a chance at least. Got to bring up Willie McIver. Now a pinch hitter. Ben Baird will come in. Out of Washington, Baird really, really struggling right now. Yesterday was 0 for 4 versus Brewster. And for the season, is just 2 for 22. With six strikeouts. He'll face Hinston here. With one out in the bottom of the eighth. Wareham up 10 to 2. Thanks for tuning in on WCTV. Jacob Toby along with you tonight. The Gateman offense coming alive. It's been stretches where the Gateman offenses look this good. But they've had their struggles this season, season as well. Baird hits this one out to center field. Going back is Heron. Makes the catch. Runner tagging from third. And Duran will score, sack fly from Ben Baird. The 11th run of the day for Wareham. It keeps coming. So Baird gets his first RBI 
of the season. Andy Shadid will get a chance here. He'll replace Luke Bonfield. Shadid swings at the first pitch. The Bradley product batting 227 on the year. No homers, two runs batted in. No one warming in the Wareham bullpen, so assume Grant Wolfram will finish the job in the ninth. Just a great day for the offense for Wareham. They score one in the first, one in the fourth, fourth, four in the fifth, three in the sixth, and then one here on the sack fly. And they gave Griffin Roberts the run support he needed. He goes five innings, allowing one run, five strikeouts. And Shadid goes down swinging to end the inning. The game can get one more on a sack fly from Ben Baird. We head to the ninth. Gateman up 11 to two. Gaiman just three outs away from beating the Orleans Firebirds. They're up 11-2, and we head to the ninth. Jacob Toby with you tonight, and a pitching change here for the Gaiman. Grant Wolfram pitches one inning, doesn't allow a run, strikes out a batter, and it's now Andrew Ryan's turn. The UMass Lowell product just finished his junior season. We last saw him on opening day versus Hyannis. Four innings pitched, one hit, no one runs, one strikeout. And he will face Pasatempo, who just swung and missed. Owen Juan, Pasatempo, Groshans, and Hale. Seven, eight, nine hitters for the Firebirds. Ryan, a temporary contract player, has stuck around here in Wareham. He's a Rochester native, went to old Rochester High School. And the funny part about him is he actually threw a no-hitter against Wareham High School on this baseball field, which was Old Rochester's first no-hitter in 10 years. So he's got some history here at Spillane. America East All-Conference first team this past season.
12 starts, 2.91 ERA, a team high 74 and a third innings pitched. Here comes the 2 2. Framed by the catcher, Anchia, just a bit outside. Some defensive changes here for the game, and Andy Shattuck comes in, replaces Luke Bonfield in right, and Ben Baird is now at third base. He replaces Willie McIver. 3 2 is ball four. Leadoff walk to Pasa Tempo. The funny part about Andrew Ryan. UMass Lowell does a game on their website with all their athletes, this or that. Which means you pick one or the other. He was asked, LeBron or Kobe? His answer, Tom Brady. <laughs> Patriots fan, the local mass product. Now Jax Groshan steps in, he homered back in the seventh, a solo shot to left field, the bleachers. See Pasa Tempo on first base. Okay. 1 0, liner in the left field. Topa gathers it quickly, throws it back, and it's first and second. Now, a little bit of a jam here for Andrew Ryan. Ryan, in his freshman season with, rather, his sophomore season with the UMass low baseball team, led the team in strikeouts and had a 24-inning scoreless streak. And speaking of scoreless streaks, the Orleans Firebirds had a 22-inning scoreless streak. Their bullpen going into the game yesterday, that was broken. Alex Austin Hale, the catcher, stepping in. Their bullpen had just given up three earned runs in over 30 innings of work before this game tonight. This one fouled off. Their closer, Josh Hyatt, who we saw last time versus Orleans, who pitched an inning and struck out a couple batters yesterday in Orleans' 4-3 win, hasn't allowed a run this season. on first and second, no outs here in the ninth. Andrew Ryan trying to work out of this jam. He walked the leadoff hitter, Pasatempo, then lets up a single to Groshans. Count now even, two and two. Ryan will look for a double play ball here. 2 2. Call strike three. Hale strikes out. One gone in the ninth. Now a double play ball would end the ball game. At the Duke Blue Devil, Jimmy Heron, the center fielder, will step in. He was hit by a pitch in the seventh. He's two for two tonight. Or rather, one for two. First pitch swinging, hits it foul. Wareham made some transactions today. Brandon Lockridge, Justin Hagenman released, and of course, Kasser and Pompey activated today. And again, when this team scores four more runs, they're 3 and 0. Oh. They're about to be 4 and 0 oh with that stat. Aaron down in the count. No balls and two strikes. Pa 
Casa Tempo at second, Groshans at first. Ball in the dirt, gets away, runners will advance. So now Pasa Tempo down to third, Groshans to second. Now a double play ball, a little bit trickier. Yesterday was a completely different day for the Orleans bullpen. They had 17 strikeouts combined between their starter, Graham Stinson, and the bullpen. And this one runs inside and believed to hit Heron for the second time tonight. So Heron goes down to first base. Now the bases are loaded with one out in the ninth. Ethan Paul comes up, grounded out to the first baseman. Sable back in the seventh. Now this could reintroduce that double play, the 6-4-3 of the 4-3-6 to end the ball game. But Ryan here in the jam. Top of the ninth, Bourne still leading Hyena seven to six. Top of the eighth, Harwich still up on Chatham three to two. Pitch taken for a strike. Paul now down, no balls and two strikes. This one sent into center field. So we'll score one run. Coming home is Pasatempo. RBI single for Ethan Paul. Third run of the night for Orleans. They still trail by eight. Now Romy Gonzalez stepping in. One for four on the night. Struck out looking in the first. Singled. And stole a base in the third, struck out looking to end the fifth, flew out to left field to end the seventh. Big swing and a miss from Gonzalez. There is action in the Wareham bullpen. Bases are still loaded here. It's tough to see with all those signs. One fouled away. Shans at third, Heron at second, Paul at first. Gonzalez at the plate. And he's staying alive.
Ryan trying to work out of a bases loaded jam, one out. 0-2 pitch to Gonzalez. Swung on and missed. Gonzalez down swinging, two gone. Cesar Salazar. DH today is one for four. Singled back in the sixth inning. Other than that, he's flown out. Takes the first pitch strike. Now it's one ball and two strikes with two outs. Orleans down to their final strike of the evening. Groshans at third, Heron at second, Paul at first. Salazar the batter, Andrew Ryan trying to get out of a bases loaded jam. The one two is swung on and missed. That'll end the ball game. So the final score from Spillane Field. Wareham 11 and Orleans 3. What a night from Tristan Pompey. He goes 4 for 5, 2 3 run home runs, 6 RBIs, and is no doubtedly the player of the game tonight. The newcomer making his debut from Kentucky. Griffin Roberts pitched a solid game tonight for the Wareham Gateman. 4 innings pitched, 5 hits. Warner and run, no walks, five strikeouts, four of those by way of looking strikeouts. Justin Glover came in, three innings pitch, three hits. Warner, one walk and two strikeouts. Wolfram pitched an inning, struck out a batter, then Andrew Ryan works out of the bases, loaded jam, lets up one run here in the ninth inning of work. So the Wareham Gateman, they advance to four and six. And the Firebirds fall to four and six. So both teams have similar records, the same records, but different places in each division. Wareham will most likely fall, rather ascend to the third spot in the Western Division, and Orleans will fall in the Eastern Division. So once again, the final score from Spillane Field, 11 to three in favor of the Gateman, thanks to our WCTV crew tonight. And thank you for tuning in. My name is Jacob Toby. Have a fantastic evening as the game will win it at Spillane Field 11-3.